Hello, senior band. Um, this is my first uh, video for you guys. Um, and um, I'm not going to be doing any playing in this video, um, unlike my younger groups uh, where I'm doing a play along thing. Um, I might do a few like little sight reading type deals where like maybe I'll put up something and we can do a little read along or something. Um, but you guys are kind of beyond playing out of method books, so that's not really something I want to um, do. So I have these etude books. I mean, I have called all of your families. Um, I only maybe two or three people I haven't got a hold of. Um, and uh, uh, so I have uh, study books coming for everybody's instruments, including percussion, horns, everybody. Um, and uh, once I get those in, I'll be sending, uh, uh, I'll put up digital copies available for you guys, or I will send out hard copies if I have to. And uh, um, Basically, what I want you guys to do is just play. I just want you to get your instruments out a few times a week and just make some noise. Uh, remember what it's like to play your instrument. And um, we're uh, uh, on our Microsoft Teams. I've, I've put up a, a thing about uh, how to keep a proper practice journal. And uh, I kind of wanted to just go over that loosely um, and just talk about proper practicing methods uh, while you guys are at home. Um, most of the time when we're doing band, we're doing group stuff, we're working on stuff together for when we're in an ensemble. Um, and now you guys are going to be changing focus for this. Um, most of the time you're going to be working on studies, which I have addressed in class. Um, uh, but you're going to be looking at etudes, which are designed to highlight your faults. <laughs> um, and so I don't want you guys to get frustrated with yourselves. When we're playing with lots of other people, it's a lot easier to kind of overlook our own mistakes and stuff. And uh, But you're going to hear a lot of your mistakes. And you're probably going to go, wow, I, I sound like butts. And uh, that's totally normal. That's what happens when you practice etudes. Um, and the goal is to be critical of yourself and problem solve ways to deal with those issues. Um, not to get discouraged. Um, so I just wanted to talk about like practice methods. So the big thing that I want you guys to focus on when you're working on something is A, am I playing the right note? B, am I playing the right rhythm? C, do I have good tone? That just goes without saying. Um, but when you actually play, you need to make sure, am I actually playing the right dynamic? And uh, am I adjusting to the other dynamics? Am I playing with nice, clear articulation? Um, am I playing in tune? Um, uh, am I breathing in the right places? All of these things are important. And so while you're keeping your practice journal, you'll notice that in my, uh, my handout, it talks about putting your first BPM of where you start and where you end. Um, now I have a mechanical uh, metronome, which I have in Mr. Sundahl's room right now for the videos I've been doing. Um, but most of you have cell phones, and so I highly recommend you go onto uh, the App Store and you get Metronome Beats. Okay, it's a really, really helpful uh, app, and you're going to need a metronome if you're going to play by yourself. It's absolutely 100% necessary. Not, um, you can get it on tablets. You, I'm sure you can get one for your. Um, Computer. If you don't, if you can't get one, uh, you can't get something available for your phone. Then um, maybe look into getting one online, like ordering one, or maybe if you, if there are any music stores like Prince in Prince George, if Long and McQuaid is still open for some reason, I don't think they are. You can maybe pick one up there. But this would be your best bet is getting one on your phone. Um, it's a really helpful deal. Um, for those of you who are unaware of what BPM means, it means beats per minute. Um, and if you ever see me looking at the clock trying to get tempo, it's because I'm trying to figure out what a specific tempo is. So 60 BPM is one second because that means there's 60 beats in a minute, right? So 60 seconds, 60 beats. Um, so, um, 120 BPM would mean two ticks per second, right? Bottom. No, wait. That'd be 120. Anyways, um, 
So I highly recommend you get one of these guys, this uh, wonderful little app. Uh, it helps you, uh, you can choose how many beats are in a bar, um, and it'll always make a higher pitch tick. So this is 4-4. Four, four. Um, uh, it'll, it'll make the first, the downbeat sound different. Right. Um, and maybe I want to switch it to 3-4, I can change that. Right. Um, and it has this wonderful little uh, tap button, which I, I love, which means I can just tap it. And it'll set the metronome to the tempo that I want. Um, also really handy if you want to figure out the tempo of a song that you're listening to. You just tap along on your phone and then, oh look, it's 128. Um, so um, now the reason you want this uh, is because when you go to do your uh, study, it, even if you play all the notes right and all the rhythms right, if you don't play all the articulations clear, or you play it out of tune, or the phrasing is off, then you didn't do it perfect, you didn't do it right. The goal when we're using these is to find our bottom line, to find the, um, the speed at which we must play, a, play the piece and we can still do it perfectly. So that'll probably have to be a lot slower than you think you need it. Um, and then just putting it up a few at a time. So I, I love this app specifically for that because if I'm, let's say I'm playing my piece at, we'll say 82. Okay, and I play through my etude. Maybe I think, okay, that was actually pretty easy and I nailed the whole thing. Okay, well let's give it plus five BPM, right? I just, there's a button that does that, right? And it minuses and adjusts and you can adjust it in real time. Um, and the goal is to push yourself and push that bottom line up, right? So your ending BPM on your practice journal is not about how fast you were able to play it. It was about how fast you were able to play it perfectly. So if you start at BPM 60 and it's really hard and it, you have to keep adjusting backwards and you set your tempo further back, that's totally normal. That's totally uh, a regular thing. Um, then, uh, and, and the, the idea is we want to find that bottom line and then we record where the bottom line is. That's your starting BPM. When you write starting BPM, it doesn't mean the first tempo you try. It's the first tempo that you can play the whole thing perfect. Okay. And your ending BPM is where you were able to get it to. Some, and if, if that means you start somewhere and sometimes you have to go back a few BPM because you realize as you're rehearsing, you're like, oh, I was actually doing all the staccatos wrong. Well, then maybe you do have to make it and, and go backwards, and that's totally fine. Um, and it doesn't take very long to write a practice journal. It's really quick. I mean, really, I, I, I would just, I mean, if you can practice with a computer nearby, you can just just finish it and whenever you do something, you're like, okay, this is what I gotta do next, right? Um, and this isn't, honestly, this is more for you guys than it is for me, um, because it makes a huge difference in your personal playing when you can actually like gauge and think about it. And like practicing isn't about playing your instrument, it's about consciously thinking about what you're doing with your instrument and then making those adjustments to improve. So if you actually are writing it down then you actually have a log and you can see where you left off. And then the next time you pick up your journal, you go, right, I was doing number 23 and I really needed to work on those uh, staccato accents in that weird run at measure blah, 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 or whatever, right? It really kind of helps keep you on track um, and it'll help highlight your weaknesses, the things you need to work on the most, and it'll help you grow as a musician better than anything that I've ever found. Having a good practice habit and having a good journal makes an immense amount of difference. Um, so I would like you to try and do two entries at least a week. Um, and you can put anything in there you want. If you want to put that you were practicing piano, put it in your journal. If you wanted to say that I, I practiced singing, put it in your journal. Put all that, whatever you want. Um, I just want to have at least two entries a week 
And that's all. I'm not going to ask you for due dates or anything like that. I just want you guys to just continually update it. Um, as simple as that. And um, you don't have to write an essay. In fact, I highly encourage that you don't because I'm not going to read them in that much depth. This is for you guys, okay? So they're notes for you. So as long as you understand what's written, that's good. You do have to actually write in detail what <laughs> you need to fix and stuff. Um, but, you know, you don't don't write a whole huge essay. You're not going to get bonus marks for that. If that's what you want to do, feel free to do that, but it's not going to affect your grade with me. Um, and um, I'm not expecting you guys to start filling out practice journals right now. Um, technically not until I have something that I can actually give you officially to work on, um, but you are more than welcome to start working on it. Uh, I believe you should be able to access your practice journal uh, from the your class notebook in our teams group um, and if you guys have any questions um, that please do get a hold of me um, you can get me on my cell phone 250-882-8219 that's probably the easiest way you can just call me or send me a text um, I will not get teams messages if you send them to me on the weekend we're not allowed in the school um, on, uh, outside of school hours or on the weekend. So if you need my need me and uh, you send me something on Teams, I'm not going to get it because I only have access to that here. Um, and um, other than that, I just want you guys to get your instruments out, play something. Um, uh, we've I've talked to a few people about potentially having a social distance concert at some point and I think it would be kind of cool if we could have everybody come out to the soccer field and keep 10 feet apart at all times and maybe I'll get up on a podium and we can do arabesque outside and maybe Mr. Sundahl can uh, um, video the thing um, but uh, uh, in the meantime I want you guys to focus on more solo stuff so I can actually like instruments like the bassoon or the tuba or things like that, Barry sax, we'll actually get a chance to play some challenging music. And I think that everybody in our group, everybody really needs a, a chance to actually push themselves and learn how to build uh, as a soloist as well. Um, so um, I miss you guys very much. Um, and uh, um, if you have any questions about doing the practice journal, please let me know. Um, and uh, other than that, stay sane, uh, stay healthy, and um, I miss you guys a lot. So uh, I will be probably putting out another video for you guys on Friday about um, some theory stuff. So stay tuned for that. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so that you'll see the new videos coming out. And um, yeah, I will see you guys again soon.